In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As we approach Great and Holy Lent, I can't help but feel gratitude for the Church in giving us the transition period of the Triodion to gradually prepare our mind, bodies, and souls for the journey ahead. On the second Sunday of the Triodion, the Fathers give us the parable of the prodigal son. At its most basic level, this parable reflects a journey back to God. If you need a reminder, here is a short synopsis. The journey is that of a son who requested his father's inheritance in advance, abandoned his family, squandered his inheritance, and found himself in such desperation that he ultimately returned back to his father in repentance and humility, hoping to return the household as a servant, not a son. Embraced back with open arms, his father welcomes him home without condition, forgives him, and offers a feast to celebrate his homecoming. In the background, we learn of the son's older brother, who in bitter resentment cannot believe that the father would welcome back his brother after having wasted his wealth while he had been loyal to his father all along and received nothing. What I want to focus on for today's sermon as we prepare for Lent is the journey back to God, the journey of returning to the loving embrace of our Father as we see it here in this parable, and what tools the church gives us to lead us to the joy of the resurrection. When I think of the parable of the prodigal son, I often look at the journey of the son and his act of repentance. But upon further reflection, this parable actually sheds light on two different journeys that we may find ourselves on the path of the prodigal and the path of the older brother, the one who left his father's house and the one who remained in it. Both of them in their own ways actively chose to separate themselves from their father. One physically separated himself and then through selfishness and arrogance furthered that separation. The other, while he remained under his father's roof, separated himself through pride and resentment thinking that the image of his service should grant him praise and recognition. But at some point in their lives, they put a distance between themselves and their father, and thus represent two types of self-inflicted separation from God, internal and external. Perhaps in your own life, you have externally separated yourself from God, distance yourself from his love by getting caught up in the chaos of the grind, putting Christ and his church on the back burner, or even shutting people out of your life. Or maybe you've internally separated yourself by getting caught up in the appearance of being a Christian while internally feeling pride or seeking recognition from church leaders for your hard work or judging others who aren't in the pews. Wherever you are coming from, Lent is our opportunity to return back to our Father even in the smallest of ways, and to realize that we indeed are never separate from God. So when we experience an internal or external separation from God, what brings us back to the Father? What can allow us to heal that perceived separation so that we can experience God's embrace and allow our true identity as children of God to be revealed? In my ministry work with youth and young adults over the past 10 years, I've come to see silence and service as two central ways to bring ourselves back into a deeper relationship with God. It is the internal and external work of our lives in Christ, the contemplative and the active, the spiritual and the physical, that are necessary to heal the internal and external separations we put between ourselves and God. Both rely on each other, and both can be seen in the parable of the prodigal son. I'll first speak of the practice of silence. It is a central practice of Orthodox Christian spirituality. It is the tool we learn from the early Christian contemplatives and hesychasts, one where we quiet ourselves, engage our whole being, recite the Jesus prayer, the prayer of the heart. This practice allows us to declutter our minds so that we are led into the space where we meet God most intimately, within our own heart. This practice of silence and reciting the Jesus Prayer, when done frequently and with the support of spiritual guides, can awaken our whole being to the radical truth that there is no separation between ourselves and God. 
Prayer and silence can help remove all that obscures our true selves in Christ. St. Nikiforos writes in the Philokalia that it is only in the inner self that one can find the treasures hidden in the fields of your heart and truly be reconciled with God. So did either of the sons employ silence in order to reconcile themselves back to their father? Scripture doesn't say, and certainly we know that the prayer of the heart was not yet established in any formal or monastic sense at that time. But if you read closely, you can see that silence is part of this reconciliation. The true power of silence is shown when the prodigal son returns to the father. He has planned a speech to say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired servants. But in the silence of him walking home, the father sees him and runs to him, acting before the son can even say a word. The father in that silence meets his son, cloaks him, and brings him into his home. The son does not understand this embrace and still expresses repentance. So even after the embrace, the son feels the need to speak to heal his perceived separation between him and his father. Father Martin Laird, a professor of mine from Villanova, makes it clear what the son didn't understand that God's actions happen in silence. Father Laird says in his book, Into the Silent Land, and I quote, because God is the ground of our being, the relationship between creature and creator is such that by sheer grace, separation is not possible. God does not know how to be absent. The fact that most of us experience throughout most of our lives a sense of absence or distance from God is the great illusion that we are caught up in. It is the human condition. The sense of separation from God is real, but the meeting of stillness reveals that this perceived separation does not have the last word." End quote. So in this parable, silence and action are intertwined, and we see it most clearly in the role of the Father. So what are the types of actions we must take as Christians that bring us back into a deeper relationship with our God to reconcile ourselves to him? To me, it is clear that they are actions of selfless love in service to our neighbor who is most in need. It is modeling the type of unconditional love the father showed his son when he returned, even after he had strayed. The father's expression of love involved physical action he ran to his son, clothed him with a fine robe, embraced him. At its core, it was an act of radical service. So the service I'm speaking about today is not service at a distance. It is intimate. It is proximate. It is self-sacrificial and it involves embracing those who we might otherwise cast aside or judge or hold resentment towards, shattering the us versus them mentality. From the life of Christ, the lives of the saints, and the Father in this parable, we learn that lived faith, that the lived faith we are called to embody, is one that requires an actual sacrifice of self in service for the other. We are called to clothe the naked, feed the hungry, and visit the sick. We are called to welcome the stranger, as the Father welcomed back his son. But let us remember the reflections of the older son in this parable, who, while he remained physically in his father's house and did all the right service, internally desired recognition and praise and resented his brother. So our service must come from a place of humility without a desire for anything in return. This service must be grounded in the truth that God is in everyone and everyone is worthy of our love. How can we separate ourselves from God if we choose to see God in others? God brought us into being simply because he loved us. And for that reason, it is in our being to be people of love, to offer the love God shows us to others and without condition or seeking anything in return, just as the father did for the prodigal son. St. Maximus the Confessor writes, quote, the one who is perfect in love and has reached the summit of detachment knows no distinction between what is one's own and what is another's, 
between faithful and unfaithful, between slave and free man, or indeed between male and female. For in him there is neither Greek nor Jew, neither male nor female, neither slave nor free man, but Christ is everything and in everything. End quote. The older son could learn this lesson from St. Maximus, or just learn directly from his father who loved freely and thus gave without regard. So we find ourselves just weeks away from the beginning of Great and Holy Lent. And this Sunday of the Prodigal Son gives us an opportunity to prepare ourselves for the journey ahead. It is the opportunity to not only journey with Christ on the road to his crucifixion and resurrection, but it is a journey of our movement back to God, to a deeper, more intentional relationship with our Creator. It is a journey that can heal our perceived separation from God, one that we either inflict internally or externally, as the two sons did in this parable. And what gives us the power to return to God after imposing that separation? Service and silence with Christ in our midst. Despite the internal and external actions of his son, the father in this parable is always there and he participates in their return. When the younger son returns, his father runs to him to meet him first. When the elder son complains, his father explains and says, son, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. He doesn't leave him feeling ashamed. This is what our God does for us. He participates in our silence and service even when we fall, even when we distance ourselves from him. So let us return to Christ this Lent through service and silence, through participation in the liturgical life, fasting and prayer with our whole heart, soul, strength, and mind. And remember a key truth that my priest, Father Anthony Hughes, once shared, the falls are not what matter. It is the return that does.